this is this is this is my. Is everybody still can see the chart? Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you okay. can close that um, uh, the terminal, it will be the screen will will be. Will oh yeah, 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 yeah. Could be great. Yeah, yeah. I just Thank had you. that up so we could watch the the price. Yeah. So how how much how quickly you lose the money? <laughs> <laughs> This this is this is actually one of my very favorite trades. Um, I when it, so basically we had a big drop in, into the containment zone with it, with it, acceleration of of short term mass. Now I don't expect it to trend because long term mass is so large. In fact, what makes it such a cool trade is when you look at this long term mass, the the two blue lines, the long long term trend, the two blue lines are down. And the mass is absolutely huge compared to this to this to the small mass to to the uh, small trend. So when you get the reentry of the small trend back in the short term trend back in the containment zone, the probability that it's going to drop. And I my expected drop was as far down as, as two standard deviations, the three standard deviations, but probably about two. My expected drop. Well, that was that was my original profit target. The my expected the the drop with almost no risk at all. I mean, just above the the three standard deviation line with almost no risk at all. You expect this to, to it's it's almost it almost always happens. I mean, I don't know the exact probabilities yet. We will. I'll be able to talk about this with more detail. But when you get this hook back into it with long with with long term mass being so big, the short term Price movement is always going to be head right back down into the trend. I mean, it's just, it's just, it just all, it always happens this way, and it's all about the mass. The mass of the of the long term is so large that when the when the short term comes back in, you get that. If you think about the teeter totter that Mark talks about, so what's been happening is this: as your short term trend goes up, you've been basically been pushing this little ball up the teeter totter, and as soon as it turns back down. You get this explosion in the direction of of the of the long term trend, and it's just like the teeter totter is. You've got a a large ball on one end of the teeter totter. You push the little ball up, and now then you let the little ball go. And what al always is going to happen is that little ball when it is going to run right down to the to the to the to the large ball, and it's going to run in a Mark well, calls it a wrist rocket. Here, here, Mary, let me let me ask you. Um, I you know it's just it's, it's a metaphor of what's going on, and I um, why why I think that that's so prevalent, and what what you're seeing here is is what we're not talking about. I, I just want to clarify is that that uh, that price will always trend when my mass is large because um, because I I don't I don't I don't know if if that is because when math, mass is over um, extended, actually the you know the probability of a short term reversal is is extremely high, but the I think what what perhaps just to to clarify I think what we're really talking about here is you know how does how does a snail move what what is or not a snail what do you call them a uh, a caterpillar how does a caterpillar move what a caterpillar does to move is it extends its body all the way out and then it it pulls it up like a little tight little arc and then it extends its body all the way out and it pulls it up like a tight little arc so so what what you're talking about here is when you for for the longer term distribution to move what it's got to do is it's got to obviously you know extend its body all the way out and then when it kind of when the short term mass pulls itself in it's like that that caterpillar body kind of compressing again and then the next extension out will will help that longer term mass make the make the movement but that's what i mean by you know the expansion and compression of energy um, and you know we call it mass. We, we we're calling it uh, you know different things here, but but basically, you know mass is is um, is energy um, in terms of, um, um, I mean that you know I mean that's why I, obviously in Einstein's theory of relativity we have um, you know energy mass equivalence, but um, the you know I th I think that that your observation here is is absolutely brilliant. Um, I would just say, you know, it's an, I think an important to note that that mass being extended like that or the extension of the longer term mass is sort of that caterpillar body expanding 
which is which is why price is moving because a caterpillar can't move if it just you know if it if it doesn't if it keeps its body compressed all the time if that does that make sense oh yeah yeah absolutely absolutely uh, and I think the other interesting thing to note on the on this trade is that I basically exited here we basically we we came down and we we extended through the the you can't you we extended through the third standard deviation and even if you best case scenario if you if you hold the trade and you let it continue down the exit comes right back to basically there's 10 pips difference between the exit that I took when it when it when it when it tagged the third standard deviation and the exit that you could possibly get out of when you get a capitulation of of, of short term of, of short term mass and then an up, uh, re reentry of of the of the short term trim back in the containment zone. Merrill, there's there's a there's something here that I, I actually would love would love for you to just expand on it and just kind of explain to the room here because uh, I think what you're pointing out is so damn important. And I and I just think it's incredible that you that you know you identified it one and two um, or acting on it in your trading. But I mean, what we're talking about is is the bottom line. And by the way, you know, one of the um, the new indicators that that uh, I've been working on is basically is partially derived from exactly the instance of what you're seeing right here. And and what we're talking about is, um, you know, if I if I were to um, take a rubber band and I were to pull on both sides of that rubber band to expand it. Um, nice. Yeah, I mean, what, what's the possibility of that rubber band? I mean, what, you know, I mean, I mean, what's the probability of it, of it recompressing once I let it go? Well, well, here's the thing. What if I have two rubber bands instead of one? What is the force of, of the, of the, uh, of the snapback if I have two rubber bands there instead of one? So what you're talking about here really is literally the exact point where you have the where you have an overlaying of, of two rubber bands and um, you know I mean I, the you know the the um, or the 3.2 standard deviations I mean in that particular bar that tags two 3.2 standard deviations what is the probability of you know if you have long and and short term distribution, what is the probability of a breach of that 3.2 standard deviation on in that in that particular bar, or even subsequent bar that you're looking at? Not high. Like nothing. So that's why that's why I think what you're you know what you're seeing here is and and that's exactly that's what the institutional guy is doing. He based that's why he's not chasing trades like the average you know like most retail traders because he knows that. You know, once you see that that quick expansion in, in probability, whether it's short term or long term, um, yeah, on a basis that basically it's you know that that's there's the probability of seeing that follow through is so unlikely one and two. That's why he's patient because he knows that there's going to be a snapback to the mean or the VWAP or you know um, whatever, and um, and that you know that's why that's why instead of you know just chasing indicators that are you know. Uh, on breakouts or breakdowns, that's why he is so, I think, so much more profitable from the retail guy, which is why, you know, why I think, Meryl, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're trading so well because you are now, like, you are thinking like an institutional order flow uh, trader. Like, you, I mean, literally, with this, with what you're doing right here, you are literally thinking like an institution, which is, which is amazing and incredible. And I think you should definitely give yourself a big pat on the back. Cool. Thanks. Now the the trade which I'm not so happy with.